What up, brothers and sisters, and welcome to MTG Malone with me, Matches Malone. And today on this beautiful Sunday, we're playing playing Black Snack Burn. Yes, Black Snack Burn. I like snake decks. I played a snake deck yesterday. And if you come here from yesterday, you are very much appreciated. And if you're new to this channel, I would love you if you could give me a follow, become part of this awesome community. A lot of people have been writing me, comments have been writing me on Twitter, even on Reddit. Yes, and I love each and every one of your comments. It is really, really cool and I really appreciate it. So, I want to give a big shout out to all of my followers doing this. Tomorrow will be my four week anniversary and I'm almost at 150 already. Just awesome. Just freaking awesome. But let's get into the deck. And into the weird glitches that Arena still has in his open beta phase. Okay, let's get into this. This is a Hooded Blightfang deck. I like the snake. Couldn't fit it into yesterday's deck, so I'm doing a deck with it today. And uh, yeah, don't care about ranking too much because season is almost over. And I won't have the time to rank up into the top ranks next month next possibilities so this death touch snake really cool three mana one four with death touch has a nice booty so those two mana deal three damage kill spells don't really affect us too much and whenever a creature with death touch attacks each opponent loses one life you get one life and whenever a creature with death touch deals damage to a planeswalker it's good by planeswalker just kill it too it's a nice snack i like this snack Who's a good snack? Who's a good snack? So, we have a lot of Death Touch creatures in here. We have good old Formal Iron Knight. It's been a long time that I've been playing it and I even got a beautiful card style. You can use his um, adventure. Profane Insight. Draw a card. He's a zombie knight. So, you draw the card and then you put him on a field with Death Touch. It's a good blocker, but it works even better with our Hooded Blightfang. Then we have the Thieves Guild Enforcer. Whenever this creature gets in, Mills the opponent two cards. We don't care really much about milling. It's a nice side effect, getting some cards out of the hand. But uh, as soon as the opponent has eight or more cards in the graveyard, it will become a death touch creature. And it's a rogue. And that's very important for something that will come up a little bit later. A little surprise. Maybe you've already seen it. Then we have the Cheville here. Good old human rogue too. Here's death touch. And the beginning of your upkeep, you put a counter... Well, how is it called again? The bounty counter? Yes, the bounty counter. On a creature of your choice, the opponent controls. And if that creature dies, you get a card and three life. And that's pretty nice. We will kill some creatures, so this will be pretty good. We only have two of them in here. It's a legendary creature. Don't want to put too many legendary creatures in here. Then we have... What else do we have? The Porky Parrot. But this is not a death touch creature. Oh. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. This is one of the nicest mutate actions with Death Touch that you can do. You mutate this on your former Lion Knight, because he's not a human, or onto your uh, Hooded Blightfang, because they aren't humans. And you can deal one damage to whatever creature you like. And because he will have Death Touch, that creature will die. Yes. And together with the Cheville, that is a real nice interaction. So, to go very well, together with this uh, You Gain One Life, we have three Revita of the uh, Thorn of the Dusk Rose in here. This priest will just help us a little bit with our game plan. And in the end, if you have five mana, you can give all of your creatures lifelink, attack in with the Hooded Blightfang. All of those creatures will drain your opponent and then they still have lifelink. That is very nice. I will make another Vito deck very, very soon because if he stays on the field, he is just so nice. He is just perfect. And we have those ram throughs. Work very well with your death touch creatures. They deal damage, no matter how small they are, they will kill those creatures. And we have the rabbit bite. Does the same thing in sorcery, but it needs to be in here. Some heartless acts, instant removal. And with the shovel, you will draw a lot of cards. And for those creatures that don't have Death Touch, like the Vito, or maybe you have the Pocky Parrot as blocker on the field, we have the Zagras. And that is why we have those two rogues and this one Vito in here, because this gets less expensive for each creature in your party. 
So this cost 6, it's a flying death touch haste, which is pretty good. Also has um, almost the same interaction as the Hooded Blightfang with Planeswalkers. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage in that case to a Planeswalker, you destroy the Planeswalker. Can come up, can be pretty good. So, other creatures you control have death touch. Let me put this over here so you see it better. Other creatures you control have death touch. Why aren't you going? So, there you are. Now you can read it, even though my beautiful face is in your way anymore. So, all of our creatures have death touch. And if we get in with the Hooded Blightfang and this, even if our Thief's Guild Enforcer didn't mill him too much, and it will get triggered by this because he is a rogue, it will be very nice. It will drain them for a lot. If you have some of those Hooded Blight Fangs out, even better. Even better. You will drain them for a lot. Each of your creatures has Death Touch if your Vito is out. So this is kind of a crazy combo deck. You uh, have to be a little bit lucky. So we will try out this deck in unranked, but you know the rules. I will win three, three, decks, uh, three games with this at some point. And then I will put it into ranked. Yep. That's how we do it. So, if your creatures die, you have some Academes Awakening. Also is a land, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And um, the Call of the Death Dweller can get you back a Thieves Guild Enforcer and a Chevel. You mill him for four. Can get you back three Thieves Guild Enforcers if you want. Or even your Hooded Blightfang. Yes. Because this will return something to the battlefield with a total converted mana cost of three or less. And this has three. I know, I know, it's not very efficient, but to get it back and maybe swing the game, this is very cool. And we have some castles in here to draw mana, uh, to draw cards, yeah, but we will draw mana, you know my luck. We have the very freaking nice Phyrexian swamps in here, six of them, four mountains, four forest, two Temple of Malice, because we are malicious with our Pocky Parrot over here, two Temples of Milady, and two Crack Brown pathways or timber ground pathways however you want to use them so this is black snack burn and i will see you all in the games okay let's this stupid sunday begin i mean sunday is awesome but this deck is stupid we will see link apo i know this guy i know this guy so oh we got a phyrexian land and we got all the colors that we want even got our Hooded Blight Fang here and uh, our... Yep. This looks pretty darn good. And I will be darned if it isn't good. Even the ram through. Nice. So if you got some creatures, those will be mine. The Love Struck Beast. So we get our knight out here. With Death Touch. And we can take care of your Love Struck Beast. Like this. So no need to uh, overextend here and get the veto out first. The Shepherd of the Flock. Alrighty. So there is a temple. But we will get our Hooded Blightfang out. Because it triggers our effect. Which we want. And then we can take care of whatever he has to offer us. So here's the beast. He's also playing black. But the beast must go. Another temple for our troubles and an heartless act. That is very cool. So we take care of the beast here. Goodbye beast. And next turn we start attacking in. And if he blocks something, well, that's just too bad for you. Together with our Vito, we can do some damage. He has the Elspeth. Hmm. Fight, fight well, alright. So, we don't have enough mana to do them all. But I want the Enforcer out. I want it. So I will destroy the Shepherd. And get in with my hooded knight, blah, 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 hooded blight fang. We drain him a little. He loses a creature. The next turn we can get out our veto. Do even more crazy stuff. Yep. 
Should have thought about that. Those two. Yep. Sorry. General Kudro. Okay. Here's another shepherd. So this board looks dangerous. But ours looks more dangerous. <laughs> so are you willing to sacrifice one of your creatures? Yep, we drain them good. And we have defenses up. So the Thieves Guild Enforcer, not yet what we are looking for, but it will be. Soon all of our creatures will have Death Touch. Are you getting in with something? No, you're not. So if I play the shovel out now... Well... Let's give all of my creatures Death Touch. And mill him a little bit for the troubles, because this is a rogue. Yeah, we are playing a crazy deck, bro. We are playing a crazy deck. So we mill him for two. The general. Are you going to destroy my Zargath? Zagras? No, you aren't. Well, then I will get in. You lose two life here. Are you willing to sack those creatures? You are. Okay, I still uh, drain you. I still drain you. Which is pretty nice, I like. So he can get his Elspeth back. But we can put a counter with a Chevil. And he can't really attack in. And he will lose a lot of creatures soon. Yeah, you can do that. What Fs. So Kudro is a good answer to rogues. Pretty good answer to rogues, I might say so. So we mill him a little bit more. Give our creatures death touch. And uh, mill him a little bit more. Yep. This is a crazy freaking combo. So we get in with our small stuff. Hmm. This power for a greater. So we're not really afraid. Ain't afraid of no ghosts. I think we hold back here. And then next turn we trigger the veto. We are on five land, so we can do that. Oh, goodbye Vito. Goodbye Vito. The Edgar. And the Sanctuary Lockdown. Okay, okay. So it's getting real in here. The Vito gone is pretty bad. But we will target his humans. And here's a Tagras. So at least uh, he needs to pay two, which he doesn't have. And we can take care of his Elspeth, but do we want to do that? I think we should get in for some damage. He can create more humans and we can block those humans. So Vito would have been nice on the field, but he is gone. So we almost got it. We almost got it. And if he wants to kill this, well, you do that. We still have some blockers here. So he gets in for a lot. But we can still block. Gets his Elspeth out once more. Well, okay. So we need to block a little bit here. Going to fight, fight me. But do we need to block everything? It's in for 5, 10, 
We don't need to block this. This also costs 2. So you can get in for 10. We're attacking with a lot of death touchers here, so you're just uh, dead on arrival. Burning him with the fangs. Did it! First game, first win. Nice. And the Zagras, for the troubles, gets in. What is your last card? Did you get me here? Nice. Thanks. Boom. Boom. Black snack attack. Black snack attack. First game went pretty well, the black snack attack. Black snack attack. So I moved my camera a little bit so you can see my Furby. And uh, even my like little green lantern uh, back there. Some of you know, I'm a big comic book fan. Maybe you've seen my Who and Why's Mattress Malone video. You've even seen that I have some tattoos. So we have no green here. But if we can draw into a green, that would be cool. So let's be cheeky. He plays green. Star and Coil Serpent. That is not a green. But we get our Death Toucher out here. And if we draw another green, we have the Rabbit Bite. We have all the removal. So he's counters. He is Selesnia counters. The Luminarch Aspirant puts it onto himself. Still no green, but we got a big boy out. And we have the Thief's Guild Enforcer to block the snack. Do you have an answer for my Formalite Knight? You don't, but you have a lot of good stuff on the field. So we're still not blocking this, but we will get our Thief's Guild Enforcer out. Mill him a little bit. Still no green. This is starting to look real bad. But we have ways to go. We have ways to go. And our Thieves Guild Enforcer, uh, yeah. Not the best card on the field here. He has all the lands he needs. He has a scavenging ooze even. But we have Death Touchers. And if we can get one little green mana. Why is it always the green mana screwing me? This is also real nice. Okay. We put this on the Formalite Knight. Put it over. Get our Agademes Awaken in here. And, uh, yeah. We hold this back for now. Buzzery Cat. We can take care of that Buzzery Cat. Because of this. Okay, the Conclave Mentor gets a lot of counters. So we're in a little bit of trouble if we cannot find a green source. But I hope we will. Hope we will find it soon. Otherwise, we're in a lot of trouble. Scavenging Ooze gets a lot of counters. This is looking ridiculous. So we don't block this. No blocks. Take the four. But we will destroy his Basri Cat. Yep. Destroy that Planeswalker. Oh, damn, still no green. Still there is no green. And he surrenders! He didn't want anything to do with this. Okay, opponent, what is wrong with you? You were winning. He was winning. We take those. 2-0. We take those. Alright, if we can go 3-0 with this, I will go into ranked immediately. Destroy my rank. On a Sunday. 
Because there is no better feeling than destroying your rank on a Sunday. There should be better feelings, but we all love this game. We're up against Loco. He's crazy. He is crazy. So we have no green again. And this hand looks pretty slow because we have no green. So we mulligan here. Still no green. I need to mulligan this one more time. And now we have all the colors and two temples. So we will keep this. Get rid of one Thief's Guild Enforcer and uh, the Rabbit Bite because it is sorcery. And we play the Temple of Malice first. Cheville. Yeah, that is pretty good. If we can draw one more land, we are pretty good here. Here's the Golden Axe Leaves. He's aggro red. So our Cheville looks pretty good here. Can't play him yet. That's not a land you need to go. So we get our former light knight if anything else comes up. We have the ram through still. Can we get one more land? The rimrock knight. Okay. One more land, real nice. So we get our cheville out now and we can uh, block the rimrock knight with the former light. Night for my iron and rip. Words don't come out of my mouth today. But I will burn. I will burn like fire. Rup. I don't block this. You're a tease. I'm not blocking this. Yeah, there you go. Exactly what I thought. Another Rimrock Knight out. But we will draw here. So what are we getting rid of? Yeah, the Rimrock Knight. Okay, this is pretty sweet. We get another blocker out and we get some life back by killing his Rimrock Knight. And we even got a veto. So our life total looks a little down here, but it's not too bad. So he has the Ember Cleave. Well, put it on there. Nothing I can do about it. I will get some life back now. I will get some life back and even have a nice blocker. Let's get it on the Rimrock Knight. We don't know what we get. But we absolutely will get some life back. Because we absolutely need to. So was he too fast? Did we have two little cards in hand? We can still block the Rimrock Knight here. The Robber of the Riches and the Phoenix of Ash. Hmm. So if we block this like this, they will both die. But I kind of need to block it like this. I need to block it like this. I will still draw a card. No, I don't. I don't draw a card. I don't draw a card. That is just too bad. And here's a forest. Not really useful. We are dead against aggressive red. Let's hold back here. At least kill his robber of the rich. He gets in for a lot of damage. Let's give him the uh, good game opponent. Yep. So against the meta, we didn't prevail. Let's get back to it. All right, that red deck got us. It got us. We're up against a bomb. Hopefully it doesn't explode in our face. And hopefully we have everything we dream of. We have no green. We have no green, but we can find it with the Temple of Malice. Can we be that cheeky? We can get our Hooded Blightfang out now. 
And if he mills us, because he might be a rogues deck. He is not. He has a Gilded Goose. So we get our Temple of Malice and hopefully that is not a green land. We need a green land. Or a Cheville. Next turn at least we can get our Thief's Guild Enforcer, the Field of Ruin. Okay. Wait. No. I want the former Lion Knight. He sacks a land and gets two on the field. But that makes our Thieves Guild Enforcer just the stronger. We're up against Simic. Are we up against a crazy mutate deck? Oh yes, we're up against a crazy mutate deck. Still no green, but we get our hooded blightfang out. We're not attacking in. He might have some shenanigans ready for us. He just might have. And if we can find one green land. If you've seen yesterday's video, that is the theme of our channel. Can we find the green land? Still have our Call of the Death Dweller. No green land. But with this, we will make our creatures into Death Touch creatures. And then we get the Knight out. And we still have the Call of the Death Dweller. So we're stuck at three lands. But we get in for some damage here, and all of them have Death Touch. He has the Shore Shark. The Shore Shark Redemption. That is not too big a problem. We can still get in for 3 damage here. And hopefully we can finally find a green land here. If we can find a green land, the Pouncing Shore Shark is not even our biggest problem. He's like our smallest problem. He draws all the lands, double the lands that we have, and here's the Sterix. So what are you putting on the field? One Thieves Guild Enforcer? Oh my gosh. He has a lot of defenses, but we get the Thieves Guild Enforcer out again. Mill him some more. We have our defenses on our own. Yeah, mill all his creatures. Give me a green land. Come on, give me a green freaking land. All I need. That is still pretty good. So, not a green land, but at least it's something that we want. So the Sterix needs to go. And we keep our blockers back here, because we have the Call of the Death Dweller. So from now on, whatever creature you're playing will be gone. Will be gone. Let's rage a little bit here. Rage! Oh, we blocked both of those. Oh yeah, we totally blocked both of those. You can have those. I don't care. I don't care. I just want to rage. Rage, Black Snack Rage. Black Snack Rage. Okay, can we make this crazy combo work? I mean, we're on three lands, he's on seven. Mm -mm. We have everything we need. And uh, yeah, he didn't want us to uh, block those, I think. Yep, but we did. But we blocked them. Finally, a green land. Everything I dreamt of. Another Call of the Death Dweller is pretty nice. So we will keep our Porky Parrot out because he's a creature based deck. Mill him a little bit for his troubles. <gasps> He has a miscast. Well, good thing we have another Call of the Death Dweller. And we just wait it out now. If you have another creature... That is too good for us. And if you don't, we can still shoot one damage into your face. So what is it you have? You have nothing. 
Okay, then we shoot one damage into your face. Ding. And we try to get our shovel out now. Good old Chad. And we have the ram through, so we can get in with the porky parrot. For some damage. Yeah, our plan looks pretty darn good. Yeah, look at my Chad. Look at my Chad. Here comes the pouncing shore shark. But we have a ram through. We have the ramiest through of them all. His cries. So you don't have one of your big creatures here. But whatever you have, you have a gem razor. That razor will die. So, those are returned to my hand, which is not a problem. He gets in for 4 damage. But yeah, little did he know that uh, he will die. And he surrenders. He knew that he will die. He just knew it. Very good. Porky Parrot did the job. Nice Parrot. Nice. Oh boy, we got three wins in a row. Well, not in a row. We got disrupted by an uh, aggro rat deck. And now we're up against the Predator Serb. We have all the colors we want and a ramp through and a heartless act. So let's find something else with the Temple of Malice. Oh yes, like the Hooded Blightfang. He doesn't know what he's up against, but we know what we're up against. We're up against rogues. No, we're not. We're not up against rogues. We will get our Thieves Guild Enforcer on the field anyways. And let's see. Oh, we're up against Big Black. Okay. So in that case, let's get our Hooded Blightfang out now. And get our engine running. We're up against the biggest black of them all. Doesn't do anything here. Are we lucky? Are you doing something now? Well, you should. Oh no. Well, at least that's kind of a creature in this graveyard. And uh, this will make our Thieves Guild Enforcer bigger. Which we like. Still have our Heartless Act. Here's a Yara. Gains a life. We get a castle. So she needs to go. Absolutely. Goodbye, Yara. So we're up against a crazy kind of Black Devotion deck. I like to see that. So he's on four cards in his graveyard. We have another Thief Skilled Enforcer. We will get in for some attacks here. If he has another... Hmm, okay. That is something that I don't care about. Because I will mill you, and now my Thief Skilled Enforcer gets just a little bit bigger. So how much more removal do you have? I have the, th the ram throughs. I have the ram throughs. And I will ram them through. Even before you can do anything. Yep. That is why we have those. So can we get something other than a land? Another ram through? Okay. In this creature base deck that he has? Not the worst. Not the worst. He's getting back what? An Ayara? Or whatever he's getting back? Makes his graveyard smaller. So that is not perfect for us. Oh, there's the Gary. There is good old Gary. So have you guys seen my Golgari Devotion deck? If you have, tell me in the comments what you think. I'm always glad to hear your opinions. But he can draw it with the castle now. Hopefully we can get something good. <gasps> he doesn't do it. Why aren't you doing it? Gets another murderous rider out. We have another ran through for that. Oh, just perfect. Just perfect. You should have gotten it on top of your library. Here is a land, not the color that we wanted. But we still have a ramp through for whatever creature he puts on the field. If he has another Gary, 
in hand, he's dead and we did it. We came through with... Oh, the rankle. I'm sorry. Did you put a rankle? Yes, we did it. We did it, boys and girls. In ranked. Even got an up rank. Didn't get our combo. Nothing the Thief's Guild Enforcers and ram throughs. I mean, look at this. We had three ram throughs. Three of them. Shuffler is fine. Just fine. Alrighty, the first game went pretty well. We got a lot of ram throughs. We could ram through like there was no tomorrow. The opponent goes first. We have no green. But three other lands, but no green. And that is pretty bad in this deck. Because most of our removal is green. So will we mulligan this? Yep, we will. Still no green, but some good cards here. So I will get rid of one of my lands. Because we're a pretty small deck. We have a small deck. And if we can get the Perky Parrot onto the Formula Iron Knight. Hmm. Easy peasy. Remove all of his creatures. The Ruin Crab. Oh my gosh. Turn one Ruin Crab. Turn one Ruin Crab. Well, we tried to find something good here. Another land. Not what we are looking for. You need to go. Well, we could have let mill us. So, he is rogues. So, in that case... Let's get the Formula Iron Knight out. And next turn, we can put the Porky Parrot onto it. Are you rogues? Are we getting milled? This is happening each time we're trying out a deck in ranked. Oh, you didn't draw a land. Well, that is too sad. In that case, let me introduce you to the Hooded Blightfang that we got two of. So, you're not doing anything? Too bad. Thief's Guild Enforcer. The Rogues. And there goes our green lands. But he's not blocking it. But with the Porky Parrot, we still have a chance. The Thief's Guild Enforcer gets in. But it will also get snacked. Can we draw land? That is a land. Not exactly the land I was looking for, but still pretty good. So we get in here, get some life back. And if he decides to play anything, we can take care of it with the Heartless Act. Are you getting out anything? He's not getting out anything. End of turn, we have the Heartless Act. And this is when enters the battlefield. But we're still in a slight advantage here. Did we play a land? We did. Or did we? Yeah, we did. So we can cancel this. What do you have for us? The Slither Wisp? Well, that needs to die. I don't want you to draw cards. We're looking pretty good on the board right now. And we'll get our Pocky Parrot out too. Oh, those were cards I wanted. But I can get them back with the Agadim's Awakening. So here's a Thought Thief. Do you have a counter in hand? <gasps> you should not have done that. That much I can tell you. You should not have done that. So he tries to mill us out. But we will get the Pocky Parrot on the field now. So the Agadim's Awakening, we need it out, and we can get the Porky Parrot onto our Formal Iron Knight. Yep, that is just how it goes. Are you blocking anything here? Are you?
No, you're not blocking anything. Getting the one damage. We will chillax here. And kill one of his creatures with the Pocky Parrot. And what will it be? Thieves Guild Enforcer needs to go. So I think he has his big boy rogue out. But we have another Hooded Blight Fang to get some damage back. So will you make the exchange? I will kill it next turn. Immediately. So we are at 26. Yep, he makes the exchange. But the Trickster will die anyways to my Pocky Parrot. What are you getting? One of my... Uh... Oh. That is not cool. But we have our own. Yep. Passing the turn. If he gets in with the Trickster, we can just kill it. We can kill a lot of stuff here. The Brazen Borrower. Well, in that case, let's kill the Trickster. He will still die. Goodbye, Trickster. And we will block his Soaring Thought Thief. <clears throat> so he's still trying to mill us. What? Okay. Okay, you do you. You do you. Still have my Hooded Blight Fang. And I even have another one. So, the Porky Parrot gets on my Hooded Blight Fang. Get over it! Get another Hooded Blight Fang out. Need to kill the Zagras. And hopefully he doesn't have another Soaring Thought Thief in hand. If he has, we're pretty boned. Gets in for two. Do you have another uh, Zarid in hand? No, you aren't. Having another Zarid in hand. Here is the rabbit bite, but we have no freaking green. And we cannot draw... ...with the... ...castle. What? No! I pushed the wrong button! I pushed the wrong button. Oh, gosh. I pushed the wrong button. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, that's just how this story ends. Pushing the wrong button. This can happen, children. This can happen. Boy, the misplay in the last game. Push the wrong button. What the hell is wrong with me? What the hell is wrong with me? Yes, brain, it is Sunday. But what the hell is wrong with me? But other ways, this deck is pretty fun. This deck was pretty funny with the Hooded Blight Fang over here. The Porky Parrot did a nice job. Those ram throughs, we had them all. We had them all and they worked like a charm. Our plan wasn't to mill, but we uh, milled some creatures out of their deck. So that was very freaking nice. If you like the deck and you made it this far and you like what I'm doing, I hope I can get your follow. That would be meaning a lot to me. Yes, English. That would mean a lot to me. And I hope that I will see you all tomorrow with a new fresh deck and our four week anniversary. Oh boy, four weeks tomorrow already. Time has been flying by in the arena, but that's just how it is. So, this was a very cool deck. I hope you had fun. I had fun, and I will see you all tomorrow.